Lord is going to be here. Amen. Hey, they sat by the wayside. They didn't sit there looking at Michael's angel. They didn't sit there flipping through some books. But they heard you the passing by. Here's what they've done. Jesus! Now, son of David, have mercy on us. Amen. Did they hear that? Did they stop there? No. But they didn't stop there. But the Bible said they cried aloud. And Jesus! But now, son of David, have mercy on us. You know what's happened in the church house? But we've lost our voice. But we can't cry no more. And we can't reach out no more. Amen. But I've got needs this morning. Amen. got needs. He told you about it. And some of y'all's got needs this morning. We need to be on the order of crying and of begging God to help our people and to help our land. I'm trying to run it out.
by Wednesday. Not when you've actually told these young people it's not worth it. Guess what? Not only Terry Brook was praying for So what are you doing over here today? I'm praying for Kelsey. I'm praying for David. God will help me. Woo! I said, hey, what are you doing? I'm praying. They get there. They tell me to help. I let them all go too far. I let they came to me. I'm glad for God that they cared about me and he cared about you. I love to pray that we won't go too far. You'll pray that, but it's still your choice. You read in the Bible, I just testify this You read in the Bible when Lazarus died. That was a friend of Jesus. Brother Ray, you read over that word. He said when he wept, began to cry.
will return. Amen. 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 This same Jesus that we, that we read in the Bible told, told you about near all the miracles that he performed, the, the blind, the death, all the miracles, this same Jesus, he's going to return. Amen. He's going to return. Church, I may be wrong. And if I am, that's okay. But I feel like with all my heart, that coming soon is soon. That coming soon is soon. So if there's ever a time, I can't testify. You can say I'm bragging on my kid all you want. Lexus was coming down Jack Street yesterday. Right there where that silver sky is right there next to me.
Monday night during service. Jesus came back. What have you done to prepare? What have you done to prepare? Me and Brother Darren, we're going to do this. I ain't got help. Sister Tracy, but I guess this is just a good time to end. We're going to do a judgment.
the ones that you don't think will go, will go. And the ones you think without a doubt will go, won't go. Y'all with me? I believe that's the truth if I've ever told you. I do. We look at people's character. We say there's no way that they can go to hell with the way they are. That's why there's so many people deceived. What was it? I believe it was Paul. He said, man, look upon the outward appearance. But he said, God, look upon the heart. Does that mean you can live like a Jezebel and an Ahab and go to heaven? No. It don't. But God knows what you are, man. Right? When you're in that bucket truck, God knows who you are. When you're driving nails, God knows who you are. Amen. When you're walking around the lines and all take, God knows who you are. God knows who every one of you are. God knows you. You may have the preacher fool. You may have the deacons and the teachers and everybody at Cherokee fool. But you ain't going to fool God. You know, I feel like with all my heart in this room right here, but I feel like with all my heart, I think we got talking about it the other day. The ones that really lived right, they've really done what they can do. When they walk into judgment, know that earth stands God. I don't believe you're going to prop yourself up and say, Here I am. I made it. Your head's going to be bowed. Your head's going to be bowed. In fear. Standing before an almighty God. Oh God. How serious. Those that, those that ain't ready, that think they're ready, they're going to come in and they're going to say, well, hello, Jesus. I made it. I knew I would. I know that I'd make it. I know that I'd do it. Depart from me. I never knew who you was. You know how scary that is? The people in the church house ain't grasped a hold of that yet. 2,000 and some years have come and gone and people still ain't realized the seriousness of what it's going to sound like when God says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Tonight, if you come, when you come into church, what if I stand at the back door and I said, depart from me, you're not welcome here. What are you going to feel like? You're going to feel pretty bad, ain't you? But this is where I come to church at all the time. This is my whole church. So there's going to be a lot of people that think that's home, Sister Kathy. Let me tell you, friend, how you're going to make it to heaven. Forgiveness, the blood of the Lamb, humbleness, long suffering, temperance, joy, peace, love. When you go through the gate, you ain't going to be skipping rocks. You'll be crawling on your belly. Thank God, please. Let me be worthy. Please let me be worthy. Please let me be worthy. Let me be found worthy. John 
said it this way. He said, there cometh one whose shoe left it. I'm not even worthy to unloose. Behold. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of this world. That's who it is. That's what we're going to stand in front of, Jerry. I don't know why I went this way this morning. Jerry Brooke, get ready. There's things in your life. Get it clean. Get it cleaned up. Get it out. Every head bowed, every eye closed, just for a minute. I'm just going to go with the Spirit of the Lord this morning. There's coming a day you're going to stand before God. There's coming a day where I'm going to stand before God. We rented a van over the weekend. And I took that van back last night, and some of y'all that's familiar with Asheville knows what I'm talking about. I passed by Leicester Highway, and I was taking the van and just right past Leicester Highway. And I took it, dropped it off, got my truck, come back through, and there was a T-bone collision right in the intersection I just went through. Right now, you're at the house of God. But at 5 o'clock this evening, you might not be here to be back at church. What's standing between you and God? What's standing between you and God? What's between your freedom? Jeremy preached to us so wonderful on Wednesday night. So wonderful. About what freedom? It's just a sound of freedom. But there's some that Ain't sounding freedom. When I hear you cry, I hear bam. What's standing between you and God? I'd be a search if we were read the church sign yesterday coming back through Kentucky said Psalms, I think it's 139. Said, Oh, Search me, oh God. Will you do that this morning? Will you just tell the Lord, oh, search me, oh God. See if there be anything in my life that's keeping me. See if there be anything that's hindered me that if I was to die today, hindered me from going. Anybody over the building just, just for a moment. Said, Preacher, I feel like there's some things in my life that has hindered me. Would you pray for me? That God would help me. Would you just lift your hand up, lift it right back down? Anybody over the building? Bless that hand. Bless that hand. Anybody else? Say, Preacher, pray for me. I feel like there's things in my life, bless that hand, that I need to get rid of. Anybody? Right quick. Bless that hand. Need anybody else? Say, preacher, pray for me. I need help from God. You, you that raised your hand, will you come up here to this altar? Get enough courage to get rid of those things that stand in between you and God. Let me ask you this way. Let, let me ask you this way. You that raised your hand, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk to you just for a minute, and then we're gonna pray. If I was a lion standing in front of you, and you had a knife, and you was just about ready to kill it. But then you throw down the knife and let the lion win. How much sense would that make? Wouldn't make no sense, would it? You'd be asking yourself throughout the rest of your life, why didn't I keep the knife and kill the lion? So why don't you this morning just step out of your pew? There's some up here praying. 
You won't be alone. Just step out of your pew. Get rid of that that's hindering you. Get rid of that that's standing between you and God. Tomorrow may not be here. The next opportunity may not be here. Anybody at all. Not quick. Father in heaven, I come to you tonight, Lord. I thank you, God. Lord, for another opportunity that you've given us, Lord. Lord, stand, Lord, and testify to your goodness, Lord, and your mercy. God, I ask, Lord, that you touch every heart and every life. God, even those who raise their hands. God, I ask, Lord, that you just touch them, God, and give courage, Lord, to get rid of those things that hinder them. God, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you just give them courage, Lord, to make things right. Lord, before it's too late, God, that you can come at any time. Lord, we as, we as a people need to be ready. Lord, help our church, God, to make sure, God, that everything's ready in their lives. Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to stand before a congregation of people, Lord, and, and Lord, and realize and know, God, that some ain't ready to go. Lord, I want to try to emphasize to people, Lord, how important it is to be ready. God, help my life, Lord, to be ready, Lord, to meet you. Lord, because you can come at any time. Lord, help those, Lord, who are lost and unknown without you. God, be with those, Lord, that's near as hell this morning. God, I ask, Lord, that you respect them. God, give them Lord, what they stand to need, but commit their hearts. Lord, before it's too late, God, time and tears running out so sweet. God, help our lives. God, help this church, God, to be a place. 